Three, two, one, going live. Is it live? Where's it at? It says I'm live here. Uh, so, welcome to uh, my first fly tying video. I've done some other ones. Oh, wait. I just hit the button. Look, it, it's there. Okay, I was looking at my computer down there, but now, now I'm looking at you. So, today we're going to tie the Zertle bug. And it's not a traditional Zertle bug. The traditional Zertle bug is on like a little streamer hook, like a woolly bugger hook. And you wrap weight around it to make it heavy. And the first couple that I made for people were like that. And then after that, you know, I did more research and it seems like more people are tying them on jigs. So I started tying them on jigs and the second order I got were for jigs. And so you can do them in lots of different colors. So uh, here's, here's one, um, I'll put it over. Let's change the camera screen. So here's one, look at this guy. This is black. And uh, we got some sparkly stuff here and a little orange tail in the back, kind of like a little thing to get take notice. And, and uh, here's some orange ones I'm tying. Going to tie an orange one up tonight. So let's see. Got some brown ones here. So what I'm doing is putting together a bunch of colors. And then I'm going to add these to what I'm calling a trout pack. So a pack of trout flies that I'll sell on my website. Instead of just buying one fly, then you can buy a trout or a trout pack. And then I'm gonna do bass packs. And then I'm really looking forward to doing pike packs because it's fun to say pike pack, right? Okay, so let's get into this. So here we go, let's switch camera. So here is my hook. Uh, I think this is, a number 10 could be a number eight and my little bead here is a little brass bead it's a 316 you can make these with dumbbells and or you can you know use a regular hook and you can wrap it in wire and weight it that is up to you so we're gonna put this in here I'm using the fine point jaws from Norvice and uh, I've become kind of a Norvice guy I didn't start out that way but that's where I'm at now. I really, really like the functionality of the Norvice. Uh, just like the fact that you know you can load up your uh, hook with thread that quick. So uh, I like to put like a little tail on the on the end, um, just something to get a little attention. Some guys tie this with with really bright thread, and they'll use an hourglass weighted bead at the front. And, and then they'll finish it off with that really bright uh, thread as kind of like a little marker in the front. So I like to add um, some rubber legs in the back, uh, just to, a little color, something show up. Now, here's a trick. Here's something I've noticed in fly tank videos that um, sometimes guys just do stuff. And, you know, the be us guys who have never done it before, we're like, how'd you do that? Well, here's something I've learned that when you're adding materials onto a hook, you know, sometimes you're doing this and look at, you're just like pushing that rubber leg over. What's going on? How am I going to get this on there? So if you, you put it up next to the hook before you at an angle and kind of go loose on your first wrap and then you got it. So this is going to be our little tail piece and we'll fold that over and we'll put a little bit more on there. And there's our tail. I like those to be the same length. So... We'll go in there and clip them real quick. Then from there, this one, we're putting this um, chenille on here. This is like a woolly bugger chenille. You can use uh, sparkly stuff. You can use whatever you want. This one has a weird knot in it. So I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use a different one. And uh, reveal the thread. And just rip a little bit off with your thumbnail. And then again, do that same trick. Put it in there at an angle. Kind of go around loose. Get a hold of it. Come on. And you're just going to tie that on and get it out of the way. 
So if you have a material clip, you can use that. I've never used one. I don't even know how they work. So I use this, this hairdo thing that, that I steal from my daughters. That's what I use. Okay, so next thing is the legs. So hold on, let me show you. So these guys have legs. Um, so it'll swim like this. Look at that, isn't that a beautiful fly? It'll swim like this, and it has these legs and all kinds of motion. Now, a zertle bug, and this some people call this maybe a jig day zertle because it's a jig version of a zertle bug. Uh, I don't care. It's it's all zertle bug as far as I'm concerned. So, the zertle bug, the name comes from a combination of um, what's it come from? It comes from the combination of a uh, zonker and a and a girdle bug okay and I don't know what those flies are but uh, you know you probably do I don't so now we're gonna take the legs we got what I did is I took two pieces of, of rubber legs these are barred ones and uh, and then I, I cut them in half so I have four pieces here and I'm gonna take that and put it on the top of this hook Again, the same trick kind of putting it in front of the hook in front of you and we're going to want to wrap down maybe about an eighth of an inch so you got some back here and you got some up here and then grab that pull it up so it's all to the top and then advance your thread forward all the way here and i'm going to get that out of the way and now these you're going to trim down later i like to trim them down in advance so that they're not in the way when I'm tying on my chenille. So we're just gonna trim these down just a little bit so they're all kind of the same length. Now, here's the cool part. You're gonna take the chenille and you're gonna go behind, in the middle, and in front of these rubber legs. So we're gonna go around, make sure you don't trap the tail ones in there, just the leg ones. Let's see, where's that one? There we go. So here's a here's a wrap behind. Now we're gonna try to get two in the middle. And we're gonna get one or two up in front of it. Alright, see so we got legs popping out of the chenille there. And we're gonna spread them out and put them where they need to be. So now we're gonna Trap that down and cut it and get it out of the way. What I like to do is I pre-cut a bunch of these pieces of chenille um, because they're easier to manage. You know, I was keeping it all in the spool, trying to be economical, but it actually was difficult to do. And then I also pre-cut all my legs. So let's, let me show you over here. So like here's a little material holder that I made and I have all my legs pre-cut and I have them on here. So, so if I'm going to do a bunch of them, that's how I do it. So now I want to grab these legs. You're going to have two on each side and we're going to spread them out. So they kind of fan out like, like two legs on each side, two in the front, two in the back. And here's one that didn't get clipped. Sometimes one disappears because it's hiding on the other side. There we go. So, there we are. We got them splayed out like legs. Two on each side. All right. Now, we're almost done. We're getting there. It's a pretty fast fly. So, Zertle Bug, I kind of gave you the, the information on the name. Uh, zonker. Here's a rabbit zonker strip. So, uh, this goes on here. And this video looks really washed out. I wonder why. My first live video, and look how horribly washed out this is. Ah. Maybe the ones in the future will be better. So, we're going to kind of figure out the length on that. Because that's going to come to the front right up there by the bead. And what we're literally going to do, it's not going to be tied down in the back. We're just going to poke a hole in it. Like this. And then we're going to take it out of the vise. Pull that zonker down and attach it back on the vise above the zonker. So now we're going to bring the zonker forward across the inside of the hook because this 
this fly rides upside down in the water. And when it rides upside down in the water, um, it's like it's a, it's like a jig. And the way these guys fish these, so you want to separate this. So I, what I'll do is I'll just lift my fingers and pull that back. Sometimes you can, you can get in there with your botkin if you need to and kind of separate them out. So the way you will fish this, you can fish it different ways. Um, you can just kind of cast it up into the current and let it bounce down, you know, fishing it kind of like a midge. Um, or you can, you can kind of cast it and reel it in. You can put two on. Oh, my backdrop. You can put two on and one above and one below. Either fish them like midges or, you know, fish them like streamers and reel them in. They work either way, you know. People say, well, what is it? What is it mimicking? Um, it's mimicking food. That's what it's mimicking. You know, ask yourself, what does a woolly bugger mimic? And whatever you say it mimics, it doesn't look like that at all. So it's just, it's just something that, that they look, that they look at and they say, I want to eat that. And uh, these are really productive flies here in Virginia. They're really productive. Um, I, I sent some out to Colorado recently and heard back from that customer. And he said, did his first float and they were killing it on the Zerta book. So I'm putting a little super glue on there before I tie my knot, before I do the whip finish. You know, we're almost done. Like this is gonna be the shortest video ever. Gonna do the whip finish. Gonna clip that off of there. And then we're gonna come in here just beyond the little tail pieces. We're gonna reach up there and clip that tail piece. So one variation of this that you can do, you can just leave the tail piece like that, or what, what some guys like to do is they like to kind of split it up the middle like that, and then go up a little further and kind of, you know, it does a little split. I, I don't know that the fish can tell the difference, but, um, you know, you can, you know, you can tell the difference. So there it is. Here, let's make it pretty. Let's put the mohawk up. So I'm doing these in several different colors and I'm gonna add them to my trout packs. I'm gonna do some midges, I'm gonna do some of these, uh, maybe do some woolly buggers, maybe doing some game changer woolly buggers. That's something I've been working on and it needs some improvement yet, but probably gonna add some of those to that. Don't know if I'll add dry flies. I, I'm not much of a dry fly guy because hackle is so expensive so i don't know if i really do a lot of that so there it is um the zertle bug um flies have weird names have you noticed that you know some of them i i won't even i won't even recognize some of them are just horribly inappropriate you know somebody ordered some flies and i'm like you know what is that and uh and then on this facebook forum they said well <laughs> Don't look that name up, so I did. I'll never get that image out of my head. It's the name of a fly. But, you know, names are, are, are interesting. Um, so, I was in India years ago, and uh, you know, by the name of my website, Some Pastor, you see it, uh, or will you see it? You'll see it. Mm -hmm. There it is. Oh, no, here we go. Right there. Somepastor.com. So, you know, I'm a pastor, so that, that's what I do. That's my real job. That's where I spend my time. So I was in India years ago, and um, we, we go over there and we teach pastors. We train pastors. So I, I was asked to name a baby, and uh, they had the ceremony, and I'm like, okay, what do I do? And they say, well, we're going to hand you the baby, and you're going to say the baby's name. And I'm like, okay. Um, can you give me the name in advance? It's probably something that I'm not familiar with. It'll teach me how to pronounce it. They said, no, no, no. You are going to give the baby the name. So I'm like, okay. So there's this guy in the Bible in the Old Testament, Micaiah. He's just like a cool prophet. Uh, we named my firstborn son. His middle name is Micaiah. So they handed me the baby and I named the baby Micaiah. 
I handed it back and later on it's like, will that be the baby's real name? They say, oh yeah, yeah, that's the baby's real name. You know, this is how we do it in the Christian church here in India. We have pastors name the babies, you know, so some places you go and, you know, all the, the you know, one place, everyone, all the kids' names are Samuel. So, so that, that's just what they do. So the, the, the parents didn't seem happy with the name Micaiah. They just weren't thrilled with that at all. So, you know, I asked about it and they kind of were really nice and they blew me off. So two or three trips later, you know, I'm there and I'm retelling the story, you know, and we're way down in Southern India. That happened way up in Rajasthan and we're way down in Southern India. And, and I mentioned what I named the baby and uh, this gentleman named Oswald starts laughing. I'm like, w what's funny? And he goes, oh, it's nothing. No, no, really, what? what, what, What's funny? He said, well, if you name the baby Micaiah, in these people's language, that would mean corncob. So <laughs> I literally named a baby corncob in Rajasthan. And that's his name. And he's like five years old right now, getting beat up every single day. So the Zertle bug. Um, Tie them. They're really easy once you get the uh, the hang of them. And we'll go back over here. Once you get the hang of them, they're really easy to tie. Uh, they are a great fly. You just cast them in the current and let them bounce around. Um, I have them on my website at sunpastor.com. I'm going to put them in the trout packs. And uh, people love these things. And uh, thanks for tuning in.